if you have your own small or medium enterprise, or if you're thinking about starting one, then you need to read this book. It's called Being Boss, How to Avoid the Knock the Knockout and Survive Your First 1,000 Days in Business and Beyond. And it's by Jess Winnemey, owner and founder of Jam Media. Hello, Jess. Hi, Shadow. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for your time. Listen, what's with you and boxing? <laughs> so, um, boxing and, and myself, we've had this uh, relationship, love-hate relationship for the last 10 years. Um, I started boxing about 11, 10, 11 years ago um, as really a way to manage some anger. And um, it's just been my first love ever since. Well, you liken it a lot to, to business. I do, I do. I see, I see boxing and business as, um, as very similar purely because the, I, I see kind of the battle that you have in a ring as, as a, as a similar way to, to how you battle in business. So you, you know, sometimes you get knocked down and you have to pick yourself back up again. It's very much a mental game. So boxing and, and business, both of them, you know, you are only going to be successful, um, if you are strong in mind more than in physicality. So that's kind of the, the idea between the, um, the parallels that I draw between boxing and business. Well, I like what you say. You say you need to know how to roll with the punches, avoid those left hooks, and above all, have someone in your corner to advise and encourage your, you throughout the fight. And really, this is when I read this, I thought, oh, I should go boxing because <laughs> maybe it's the best way to start your business. But you've had your own experiences. Uh, you drew from them to, to put this book together. Tell us about that. Obviously, like I said, from a, from a boxing perspective, that's been something that's just been a narrative through my life over the last 10 years, and I've seen me kind of through um, the various businesses that um, that I've run. So I'm a bit of a, in a sense, I hate to use the term serial entrepreneur, but this is my third startup that, um, that I'm currently in. And the industries have really varied. So the first one was a clothing business, and then we moved into um, blogging, and specifically mommy blogging, and that was purely because I um, I just had my first baby, and that was kind of my entire world. But what's interesting about that business, Mommy Matters, is that it really set the, the, the stage for the previous or for the business to come, which was Jam Media. And I found that um, particularly in the in the mommy business space, often moms will kind of go off and, um, and have a, a baby and then develop a business kind of while they're in that space. Mm-hmm. And I found that they were particularly unsupported from a PR and marketing Perspective, and so kind of an offshoot of Mommy Matters um, five, four, five years ago was to start offering kind of marketing on a social media and on a PR space to these mommy businesses. So really, for me, in all the businesses, they were kind of formed out of finding a um, a need or a, or an issue in. In, in life or in society and wanting very deeply to, to fix that problem. And that's kind of how Jam Media was born and obviously we've, you know, we've matured and progressed from there. Do you know, I, I find the most difficult part of being an entrepreneur is to make that idea work. Um, and because you're responding to a service like you are responding to being a mom, then you wanted a service and you started a business. And, and it's easy then to follow somebody else's kind of path as opposed to charting your own that is the difficulty what should people consider at that point you have a great business idea you think you know what you need to do but just getting it out there becomes the issue Uh, absolutely so i think you know entrepreneurship is something that you you either have or you don't um and a good telling tale of whether you're a good entrepreneur will make for a good entrepreneur is if you're a really bad employee and that's really what i was i was um this terrible rebel that you know that struggled with rules and with you know understanding other corporations uh, expectations etc so uh, that was my first kind of telltale that maybe i needed to have my own business because Mm -hmm. um i wasn't very good at, at working in somebody else's so like i said i think entrepreneurship is something that is kind of built you're born with and you you either have it or you don't and and then you really from a from an ideas perspective i felt like you know i had no other choice but to make my my idea work because what was i gonna you know fall back on mm-hmm. so it takes a lot of, of grit and determination and just plain stubbornness in, in, certainly that was from my side i think i was just too stubborn to give up now i understand why you box 
I'll give up a lot quicker in the ring than I do in business, to be honest. Um, you know, being hit in the face is a whole other story. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, and, and, and then you have to go sell yourself or sell your idea to somebody for them to believe in, invest in, or even support. That becomes the second challenge. And absolutely, that is by far the, the most the most difficult and the one thing that's going to set you apart in terms of success. So many people have amazing ideas, um, and they can possibly even make them happen without you know without support. But ultimately, in some way or another, you're going to have to sell that idea, whether it is to a potential investor or whether it is to a client. And if you're not able to communicate that idea in in a in a great and inspiring way, you have set yourself up for failure from the start. So a big part of the book, obviously because of my kind of PR background, which focuses on um, your public, you know, um, brand, your personality, how you convey your messaging. Because really I've noticed, and this was even in my employment, in employment phase of my life, was that I was able to land um, great interviews and get great jobs purely on giving a good interview because you're able to just convey that message in a way that, that is inspiring to people. So you're always selling, whether you're selling yourself um, to a potential client or to an investor or whether you are um, trying to convince a talent to join your team. You know, everything in life is, is ultimately boils down to how well you can sell. Your personal branding as opposed to the company's branding or are they one and the same thing? It's a tough one, and I wish I had the answer to that. I I, um, I battle with that all the time, and I think it really depends on um, on the size of your of your company. So mm-hmm. for me, I 100% believe currently that my personal brand and my company brand and whatever other projects or brands that we develop from this is is one and the same. But there are bigger companies when there are multiple people who um, are in charge of that company, and they are able to differentiate between the company and their personal brand. Having said that, I don't think that you ever 100% severed um, from your company profile. So definitely what you do in your personal capacity, if it's negative, it's going to come back and it's going to bite you on the butt. If your personal brand is more established than your company, for instance, I know people that uh, go into movies and those kinds of things, and then they were models before and their personal brand was huge. But now that they leave that industry, start their own businesses, and the, 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 the transition there may be confusing to people that know you. Who do you sell as a business yourself, even though your business is not what you did? Um, you know, so, yeah. so what do you do then? Well, I think that your personal brand, if you are very well known, it can certainly get you in the door and land you, you know, the projects or the contracts. Um, maybe at a better at a better pace than somebody who is completely not known because people want to meet you know this famous person or mm. this expert in the industry. Mm. So it certainly can help you get foot in the door. But if you're not an expert in that next venture, it's only going to last so long. Now I need to know you. You've got you've got something here that says how to work on your business and not in it. What does that mean? So ultimately, I mean, this is everyone's dream, and I wish I've gotten, I could have told you that I've already gotten this 100% right. But ultimately, <laughs> the idea is that you're building a leveraged business so that you don't become, you know, the best employee of your business because mm. then you really should just be working for somebody else. And to be quite frank, um, I could probably land a fancy, you know, account director job at an Ogilvy and earn a lot more than what I'm earning now, as an example. Mm. So I got out of employment for a reason, and it's not just, you know, because I want to kind of come in at 9 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning, but because I have passions beyond this one business and because I wanted to make a difference. So you need to be very careful that you don't become the best employee of your business, and that takes time. So you have to, you know, build a business that you're able to then buy back back some time eventually. And, And that can happen in various ways. Obviously, the most obvious is the idea of hiring an amazing team mm. that can run, you know, can run the business without you. But team members come and go, and that's another chapter in my book because I've suffered some really, some really tough losses of amazing team members because people don't always stay. Um, other ways that you could, you know, build a leverage business is through finding, through finding parts of the business that don't require you permanently hands on. Um, we've managed to do that through some online courses that we're currently are running. So you put the time into to develop those courses initially, but then it resells itself and, and the idea of, you know, making money while you sleep becomes a, a reality. But that, those things take time and, um, certainly the first three years of your business 
you know, that, that startup phase is a great time to lay that foundation, but it's not necessarily going to become this amazing reality within that three-year period. It's something to think about, though. Listen, I'm I'm so glad you 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 shared all of this with us. And and being boss is at every good bookstore. Uh, uh, we're working on that. So <laughs> I deliberately went the self-publishing route because I wanted to kind of have ownership of the book. Um, and as a result, the distribution process into bookstores has come after the actual publishing. I wanted to just get it out. Okay, so, so where do we find it? Available at loot.co.za, and we'll be in leading bookstores in the next two months. Loot.co.za. That's it. Thanks, Jess. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.